the A90 Super is getting a big upgrade today. It's gonna look better, sound better, and perform much better. Let me show you what we have in store for today's video. Here it is guys, at no surprise, a big turbo upgrade for the Supra. It's only right, it's a Supra, right? <laughs> Gotta do the big turbo upgrade. This is from a company called Doc Race, which a lot of you guys should be familiar with. I've worked with them in the past, especially with the 335 N54 platform. We have a top model kit from them, and this is a six port kit. So for later Supras, not the earlier models that are two port. For the turbo, I decided to go with Precision. It's honestly the only company I have experience with, so I've stuck by them. They've been pretty good to me in the past. 6466 ball bearing, so beefy turbo that is rated for like 900 horsepower, I believe which is more than enough. I don't even think I'm looking to make that much with the Supra. But anyways, lots of overhead. And then we have the exhaust manifold, which looks very quality, very hefty too. Obviously thermal coated for heat management. It is made out of cast. So very, very nice. I did forget to mention too. You guys know what this is? You see the housing? Yeah, T51R mod. Oh, my precision calls it something else. I forgot the name of it. I'll overlay it on screen. But this is what I'm mainly excited for. It's going to make this setup sound so good. I know you guys have heard that whistle from certain turbo kits. This is the main reason why, guys. So we're definitely going to swap out the stock housing with this one so we get some beautiful sounds. Have the heat shield here for the turbo. We got the down pipe all coated as well. The charge pipe set, two-piece, coupler, an elbow, coupler, Dual wastegates from TurboSmart, which is another company that I've rocked with pretty much forever, so I just tend to use their products. So we got two of those. We got some heat wrap, a gasket of some sort, the intake, oil lines, vacuum lines, all the hardware, gaskets, pretty much everything you need to install this kit. There is one thing that's missing, which either I misplaced it or it never came in a box, I forgot, because I got this package a long time ago. It's the dump tubes. I don't have them here, so I think the waste gets just gonna dump to wherever for now. <laughs> Anyways, I'll figure that out soon. Sure, I'm super excited about the power that the Super is gonna make with this kit, but this is the one thing that I'm most excited about, is that sound that this mod is gonna create. It's gonna sound so good. If you guys wanna learn more about this kit or you're interested in purchasing it for your Supra or maybe you're interested in another turbo kit that we offer on our website, I'll leave a link down in the video's description so you guys can check it out. We'll get started on some of the process today. Probably won't finish it. It's getting pretty late, but we'll start it. CSF charge cooler just looks so good. And we're actually gonna utilize it, right? We got the turbo system. We gotta add the fuel rail there so we can do port injection and make a lot of power. Got a bunch of spaghetti under the hood. So yeah, we'll start with the, the intake, the charge pipe, get access to the turbo, and we'll go from there. So off camera, this guy just went ahead and installed the, the T51R-ish mod. It's not ish, it is. <laughs> Stop saying that. Precision calls it something else. Yeah, well, who cares? <laughs> this is a T51R. You would have had a service position if you had a Mercedes. Who wants that garbage anyways? So two things. One, you guys should subscribe to the Swap Depot channel. This man makes a lot of good content, uncensored, and fun for everybody to watch. And two, we get a lot of questions asking us if we work on cars here at the shop. Do we work on cars, Ali? No, we just look at them. <laughs> There's no walk-in service though. It's appointment only, hit up Swap Depot on Instagram if you guys need any kind of work done, maintenance, performance, whatever you guys need for your car. Cheers. We're in Orlando, Florida, by the way. Dumbass sensors. This takes like 20 minutes to take off. Are you set to take everything off, it's 30 minutes. So 20 minutes is just taking off sensors? Yeah, 20 minutes just to take off these two sensors without breaking them. Jacob likes or loves to cut me up. By the way, this is why I didn't choose to upgrade the intake box or upgrade the charge pipes. It's because I knew I was going to go big single turbo since we already have a single turbo from factory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ali says this is a muffler. It, it muffles the sound of the air. Yes. Because the air is so loud. Yes. <laughs> so totally unlike an N54, we're already at the turbo and it's easily accessible. Look at all that space, dog. Now we're just gonna slap the other turbo on here and then uh, compound turbo setup. Diesel. <laughs> That's really all it takes to Bro. charge prep and intake? Why is it like this? What Maybe is that? F30s don't have that. 
So assuming you were doing something like a pure turbo upgrade, this would be the easiest thing ever. Yeah, except uh, when you're trying to do any kind of turbo on these, it's like really hard to put the turbo in and hold it at the same time because it's fucking heavy. <laughs> Unplug ASMR. What is this? It's like a tree stub. It's like a dead end. That's what I'm saying, it's a tree stub. <laughs> They're like, uh, oh, okay, up. just cut it. I know you guys like when I do some of the work on the car, but Ali's not letting me do it because he's much faster and efficient at doing this because he has a lot more experience. At least I can get you guys some good content and explain the process so you guys can better understand if it's something that you're looking to do to your car. Why do all those clips have to be childproof? Does children work on these cars? This was such a struggle to take off, but here it is, the beautiful FI downpipe, guys. So let me know if you guys are interested. Mint condition, great fitment. Makes the car sound good. Plus it allows you to tune the car to make more power. So kind of hard to show you guys what's going on here, but he's taking off the lines. So we got the O line and the cooling line for the turbo. It's gonna get kind of messy here, but uh, we'll do that. Then we'll head over to the top and remove the turbo. You got, you got great pants, bro. Oh, there it is. Taking a piss. It's don't, out. You, <laughs> don't you wish the N54 turbo upgrade was this easy? Yeah, we would have still been taking off the inlet right now. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You get all the room, everything's accessible. I mean, this has to be one of the simplest upgrades for BMW. V58 just makes it easier. So not only is this engine very capable, it's super reliable, and it's pretty easy to work on. Just look at all that room, guys. You can sleep in there. We're gonna see what the fitment's like now. This is a relatively new kit, so we're gonna find out what the fitment's like and see how easy it is to install. So this piece that goes underneath the turbo does not go back on because the manifold design is a little bit different. So this comes off. It's only applied for hybrid turbos or obviously stock turbos. What you wanna do is grab the, <laughs> grab the bull by its horns, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a hefty one, bro. So this is the part that sucks. Cause it's heavy and you have to get low. <laughs> so you better hit the gym before you install this kit. You better be curling minimum 45 pounds on each hand. So the trick is we need to get this gasket in place. Pre-existing gasket that was there, I guess we reuse it cause the dock race kit didn't come with one. So we're just leaving it there. Yeah, so it definitely helps to have uh, two people doing this, especially while you have to hold it in place while you get that first bolt on which you can see we already did so that holds it into place for now should be easier to just put the rest of them very heavy uh you've been warned so after spending a few hours trying to install this manifold we came to the conclusion that you can't use the oem bolts because it just doesn't fit some of the holes because the manifold gets in the way underneath so ali decided to go a different route so if you guys see closely right here we decided to go with studs from an n54 instead and that should be able to clear so we can just put a, a copper nut right there that should self-lock 
and should make the installation process a lot easier. Also, another difficulty we had was keeping that gasket in place while installing the manifold just kept falling off and Ali cut at his fingers twice. There, <laughs> there's the band-aid. So we blobbed it with like- There's like five pounds of <laughs> gasket maker on a there. A gasket maker on there. Place. Yeah. So that's how we kept it on there. Another thing is that portion of the manifold on the left side wasn't fitting properly, so it wouldn't fit flush. So we had to shave some of it on the on the left hand side so it can clear. Now it should install okay now. So uh, we'll keep you updated. We're not filming a lot of this process because we're literally both doing it. And there's not much to see anyways as far as room goes. So yeah. First thing we have to do is actually put the fitting on the return line and then route the line and see where the line ends up. Feed line will come from this fitting upwards to this port. So we're pretty much almost done here. We've got the charge pipe, everything tightened up, sensors plugged in, all the clamps are nice and tight. One of the wastegates installed facing this way. Uh, the second one has to be installed from the bottom, so we'll take care of that. Turbo feed line. Uh, we got a clamp ready here for the down pipe, which we have to install. I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it. It does come with thermal wrap for it, but the down pipe is also coated. Uh, to reject heat so anyways we'll probably do that just just to try to keep things a little bit cooler underneath the engine bay but yeah looks very good we also cleaned up the the intake manifold just a little bit had a bunch of that clutter evap stuff so we addressed that and we'll probably gonna go ahead and chop this up in half so it covers up a lot of this mess right here and then it exposes the beautiful csf super manifold First start, guys. Let's see. I'm actually surprised when we first started the car, it didn't sound very loud. It didn't trigger a cold start, which was very odd. And I think it's because we messed with a lot of things, especially like to clear the section on top of the intake manifold. We got a lot of like faults that we need to clear and code out and stuff like that. So I didn't do a cold start, it wasn't very loud. T51 R mod though is, it's pretty loud. It whistles very high pitch. holding the brake. Looks like everything's installed correctly. We just gotta add some coolant. And then I gotta contact my tuner, David Shoup, which a lot of you guys should be familiar with. It's the only guy that's tuned my cars in the past. I'm gonna wait for a base map from him, then we'll go for a test drive and uh, see how she drives. So it is the next day. Wanted to show you guys the setup. Yes, a lot went down off camera because we kind of needed all four hands. But here's the turbo. We did reposition the feed line to point this way and go underneath. It was leaking. So we did add some Teflon tape, something we said we weren't gonna do, but we added it correctly. So it's, there's no way the turbo's gonna suck it up this time. There's the intake, went ahead and put the, the brace back on. The beauty cover was cut. 
so we can expose the beautiful CSF Super intake manifold, which looks very good. And I, if you guys haven't seen the videos before, it matches the Techna Bronze on the Titan 7 wheels TD6. A little bit of a rough cut. Probably gonna smooth this out, add like a rubber gasket so it looks a lot cleaner. We also added the shield that comes with the dock race kit, keeps the heat away from the plastic valve cover, you know, plastic and heat just doesn't get along. So there's a plate that covers the downpipe section there and the hot side of the turbo. I really like the setup, guys. I mean, when you have this hood closed, can you really tell this super is decked up performance wise? You can't see any of the CSF upgrades and it just looks like it has wheels and it's lowered. That's it. Until you hear it on the road, you know, you hear that T51R mod sound. Yeah, then I guess you'll kind of know that this car means business. So here's an upgrade that I've done recently. This badge was sent to me from John uh, from uh, Thick Whips, the YouTube channel. I believe he works with a company called Panda American Design and he makes these like color matched super badges which are really cool looks a lot better than the black ones that you get from factory and they kind of like crack and fade over time so this is really cool and they have like nfc capabilities where you can scan it with your phone and your social media information pops up on your phone or something like that so yeah i figured i'll show you guys that since i'll probably get a lot of questions but it looks really good i'll leave a link down in the video's description if you guys are interested in getting one of these for your supra so david went ahead and sent over the base tune about the flash the car going to be using the new mhc universal adapter which we also saw on the website make sure and check I'll leave a link down in the video's description. It should be relatively fast to do. Went ahead and open up MHD Flasher F and G series. We'll go to Flash Custom Map right here. We'll choose the file that David sent over, and we're gonna write Fentanyl. It's literally five seconds into the car. Amazing. Hola. We got the tune on, and we're gonna go for a drive. Well, here's the kicker. We don't have any vacuum lines attached to the wastegates themselves. So we can't really push the car because it's not to know how much boost is making. I can blow the engine or get into a drivetrain mount function, one of the two. So we're not really going to push the car in this video, but we will in the following video once we get the tune dialed in. Uh, for this video, I just want to do like, I guess like a driving impressions more so we can hear it. That's what I'm more excited about. Might as well stop recording. There's a lot of traffic here. You still recording? Yes. This video is sponsored by Versace. <laughs> it's a good cologne, by the way, for guys. All right. You hear that sexiness? <laughs> that sounds so good. Sounds like a sewing machine. That sounds like. Oh my god. That's, that's a must. The T51R mod is a must. Oh, you hear that approaching you? You gotta be scared. Even though I'm making no power right now because we're, we're on a base too. <laughs> so even with the windows down, you're hearing that loud and clear. Again, I can't push the car, sadly. So second gear is not really that loud, the 251R, but once you go to third, it's real loud. It sounded like the wastegates were gonna open, but maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't wanna take a chance. <laughs> Cause it picks up boost pretty fast. As soon as I floor it, like within seconds, it already wants to, already wants to do something. It wants a party. No! Oh! I'm not faking that smile. Me likey. <laughs> Me likey. Make sure to subscribe so you guys see the next video. We'll have a tune and we'll go for some runs and uh, see how saucy the car really is. Make sure you hit the like button if you guys enjoyed it. It really does help with the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. Until next time. <laughs>